Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, appreciate I haven't posted for a while, um, but I've been, as you can probably see, doing a lot of work around the workshop at the moment, clearing a lot of space, um, and I've got a new toy to play with. So, from the previous couple of videos I uploaded of turning wooden mugs um, and a few lathe orientated bits, that was done down this end of the workshop. <clears throat> and you can probably see in the background that there was a hell of a lot of clutter and mess all around sort of this area, all the way throughout. So I put a lot of hard graft, a lot of hours, um, and cleared a lot of space in here, and it by is no means finished. Um, but I've actually ordered something maybe a little bit ahead of time. Um, so why don't we unbox it and see what we got? Okay, so this is the first part we're going to look at. So this is known as the wide bench. So as you can see, it's very well packaged. So this is packaged this way, so it can be flown sort of um, anywhere in the world. Um, and they, they do, they do sell these. And um, ship them all over the world. So that's why they're so well packaged. Let's see if we can squeeze this out. Okay. Oh, that's very snug, very well made. I'll tell you what. Lovely extruded aluminium. So let me just unclip you a minute. You can have a little look at the uh, quality of all this. If you look at the uh, the mitres on the aluminium extrusion, very well done. Very nice. Very nice. So these centre pieces apply. I'm going to pop some of these out and probably turn these into some sort of MFT locators. So for a few bits and pieces that go on to this bench can be um, sort of fixed on with some sort of dog system very cool very nice so under here I don't know where, how well the camera's picking up but under here you've got sort of row of teeth cogs yeah I don't know if you can see it here it might give you a bit of an indication as what we're up to there Pop you back up there, and I think I'll unpack the legs next. Get some legs on it. See you in a minute.
Okay, so the best I can tell, put the said head onto the X beam, onto the wide bench, all attached. Power cables, communication cables plugged in. Seven inch touchscreen console plugged in. Now, I'm not going to lie, you'd be an idiot not to reference off of the quick setup guide that yet you've taken the time to make for you. Okay? Things are too delicate. What the maximum extractor power is that it I can talk you through everything. Bench. Okay? Literally, step table, by step. It shows that so, I'd be an idiot not to reference off of that. So, as you can see, I've got the looms connected. I've got the height adjustment plate. That's all connected. The dust shoes in place. That'd be quite important when it's up and running. So, I think we're actually ready to switch this thing on. So we've got power. All we're actually waiting for now is to turn this and in theory, it should start to power up. <laughs> you ready? Because I'm not sure I am. <laughs> okay. So you can hear some of the motors engaged. Come on, let's take you across. So the console is firing up. So looking on the website, this should now in theory, once it's powered up, start to take me through a quick start guide. Now it's gonna ask me some details that for obvious reasons um, wouldn't be sensible to share across sort of YouTube platform. Did you just see that? There we go. How cool is that? Wow. Okay, smart bench warranty registration. There you go. So for obvious reasons, I'm not gonna share, uh, share that level of detail with you. So, what's gonna ask me to do is it gives me a QR code. So I wonder if I can just scan the QR code off my phone. No, it doesn't seem to want to. Oh, there we go. Put off the screen. Now it's gonna direct me to Yeti's website, okay? That's now going to ask me for my details. So I'm going to click on register. Okay. So we've got register for a Yeti tool account. So just going through the registration stuff now. But as per blinking usual, putting two passwords, they're supposed to be the same and they're actually different. So let's see if we can. Sort this out. Okay, so I've gone through the activation process um, on Yeti's website. So in theory, I'm now at the situation where I have been sent um, a verification link, which I'm now clicking on the verification link. And as we talk, this is loading. So hopefully, be a perfect time for the internet to kick out. <laughs> So it's now saying that my account has been successfully verified. So now what do we do? <laughs> so to submit your details and receive your activation code, done that. Can't use the web form, right, done that. So I'm assuming, click on next. So your serial number is. So. So it's now come up with the screen saying what my serial number is. So I'm just going on to their website to have a look. Do I need to put in my serial number anywhere? Because I'm assuming I do. Okay, so I managed to get to a screen where effectively not sure. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm actually registering all over again. I'm registering my new details, I'm not sure. Right, okay, so we are at the stage where I'm gonna need that. So I found the right page. So we're laughing. All fields are required. 
blah 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 right okay so where the console saying that I have successfully completed my warranty registration now I'm not gonna lie um, nothing against Yeti but that was a bit of a faff so it's now taking me through some safety warnings improper use of smart bench can cause some serious injury yeah I get that okay does smart bench need to auto square the X and Y axes yes so in theory Ensure smart bench is clear. Remove extraction hose from the Z head. We can do that. Drop round to there. Now, watching videos, I don't think it actually travels anywhere on the bench. It's just more of this X and Y motion here. So, I'm going to come down to this spot here and I'm going to press the home button. And check this out. So it's now looking at the Z head and that is home in the Z head to know that it's at its maximum. Okay, I'll move you out of the way. So we're gonna hear some clicks in a minute. So what that's doing is it's moving in and out effectively squaring stabilizing and calibrating itself and you'll notice it's going to push itself to its limits and it's going to come down here and at some point it's going to push itself to its limits here there we go square in Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just in a position where I can actually move the whole entire console to pretty much anywhere on the bed I want it so this is good for setting them your starting you know your dating points so uh, that's better there we go that is proper isn't it, eh? I'm in a position where I can just press the home button when you're ready it will move um, and adjust the spindle and effectively what it will do now is it will bring the whole console back to a starting location all automatically so once it gets here and it's quite happy in theory the, the light should go from an amber then to say it's in operation to, to a green colour see so it comes in quite quickly and then what it do then is it will very finely then reset itself there we go. Right, so I'm going to mess around. I'm going to have a look at this laser. I'm going to have a look at getting Wi-Fi set up. Um, and really, next thing would be extraction, spoil board to go on this of some form, whether it's only just a temporary one. Um, and then actually having a look at moving some of the plans I've already been messing around with and, and seeing if we can start to get this thing to cut. Um, in the box over there, I've got some end mills ready. I need to pull those out, go through those. There's loads and loads and loads and loads and loads to do before uh, we're, we're making any type of product. However, I'm just extremely excited and wanted to show you. What it looks like for me will be, hopefully, a fantastic world of CNC routering. I've got to be honest, this has been a very long time in coming. I am extremely excited for this. So thank you very much for joining me.